quintuplets are a form that has interested me um, pretty much since I figured out that that's the flavor of the Peaches and Regalia melody by Zappa. All right, so that thing that it's, I used to call it the falling down the stairs noise or the, the falling down the stairs rhythm because it just seems to tumble over and then, so the, the Peaches and Regalia, bum, ba da da dun 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 da dum bum ba da 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 dum bum bum so that weird section is a quintuplet followed by a triplet, and I used to find that just funny, and I think music can be charming and cheeky in that way. Um, so that's how I got interested in the quintuplet form. Uh, this piece uh, is one I'm working on for, for Winter Light to perform. And it was originally based on straight quintuplets. And I found that just moving it to 5-8, five, uh, five, I was able to contrast that with 4-4 four, four a little better. If I'm not just playing, I kind of got to use the glasses. Um, so I'm going to just play this back. Uh, I have an idea of where I want it to go. But you'll see it's, it's based on just this, this shape of 5. that's a common thing I do I end up writing kind of like a big build up and I'm like I need to figure out where this is going but I can't I can't kind of throw it all at myself at that one moment and I need to come back to what it's going to be so another thing I've been playing with lately is what I call the the death riff um, if you listen to a lot of like Chuck Schuldiner death riffs um, or, or songs I mean they do this thing where everybody pauses, like everybody breaks, and the guitar shows you this sick riff for the first time, and then everybody comes back in. And for how much it's done in Death, in Death's catalog, I don't know why it's always cool. Um, so I've been playing with that form because they, it just doesn't seem to. It's it's something there, there's there's a lot of tools that you could try. And just like, eh, it didn't really work that time. When death does it, like, every time it's good. Um, so I don't think that for for me, every single time is going to be, like, a home run. But it's a, it's pretty often sick as hell. So um, <clears throat> staying within these structures of five, um, I do feel myself rounding it off into six. Uh, when I'm thinking about it a lot, but I do want to keep that it's a little bit of this stutter step gallop and it's not that weird um, but it is it is in the odd like literally odd numbered territory um, um, so the way I've been thinking of that a lot of riffs I come up with kind of simplified simplified melodies and simplified rhythms at first and then add some decoration to them once more of the structure is there and I can see it a little better. So what I've been thinking about is something like, um, let me think about five. So yeah, so something like that. Um, I'm gonna start putting that in. And 
then um, a good example of how I would kind of form that more basically is those those higher notes are probably going to be tremoloed, which I hadn't gotten there yet. So what that'll turn into is something like. Let me throw some tremolo markers on those, which is that thing. Uh, let me just make sure that's not going to be like goofily fast. All right, so I'm just going to listen back to this to make sure I transcribe this thought right. <laughs> right, there's a tempo drop there. So that's measure 41. I do like this Les Paul, but it's buzzy. Buzzy than some other guitars. Um, cool. So here we're gonna need. Um, so I thought of it as a tempo drop uh, that may be, or was okay. So if I'm clicking in the quarter note, uh, so it would be half of this. So when I was tapping out that tempo, I was hitting. Um, oh, let's see. Um, um, so it'd be like 95, say. All right, so let's see if this is goofy. Yeah, okay, yep, so I was thinking of that correctly. Uh, although that is still a little slow for my taste. Um, I do want that. It is a kind of big change, but I also want it to remain exciting, and I feel like a little extra speed will give that excitement. And then I tend to like to do, I do like repeating structures a lot. So I'm debating a second ending. So you'd have a structure like. And then one like. All right. I think I like that. So I'm just going to move this shape over and change that that ending. Um, I want a little different flavor on this portion. So it is. Okay. That is um, kind of repetitive on its face, but I just think it sounds sweet. So I'm not going to. And then so here's a question about the death riff. Um, One thing I've been trying is um, introducing, when there's two endings like that, introducing one with the first ending as the death riff. Then everybody comes in. We all do that one again uh, and present the first ending all together again, and then all together do the same, you know, the same structure, but with the second ending. So um, I feel like I do like that. I feel like I want to keep that. So... Uh, The way this would function, um, or even twice too. So, kind of introduce that just with the first ending, and then we'll add this this spiciness uh, once everybody comes back in. And now that I said that, I wonder if the death riff should be kind of its own thing, and then this verse will be um, just the second ending. That, that so that's a neat way to combine the ideas of the break the death riff, um, having everybody come back in and then having something be different about it besides just other, other instruments playing at that same time. Uh, so let me kind of, cool. Um, so the structure of this thing, so we're going to, cool 
and then that's where the rest of the group would come back in. So this is interesting too because these these rhythms um, I've always referred to uh, these sort of I don't want to call them sterile because I am super attracted to just blast beats and these rhythms that I would call very vertical um, and to contrast that an odd against even polyrhythm um, there is a sort of horizontal motion that I've always uh, struggled to describe in the way that uh, those two meters interact. So you have the, the stability of 4-4 four, four against uh, some, some odd number over 8, and you get this push and pull between where the pulses of the 4 are landing and where the, the main structure, right, because you, you have this, you'll have like a whole phrase that's in, say, like 7, um, and there's a push and pull that happens between the seven structure and the even four. And there, that push and pull I've always described as, as horizontal motion. Um, so the, the point that I was going to make is we'll be doing a pre-vertical sterile drum rhythm to back up this riff in five, uh, which is not going to change much about it except where the accents land. Um, so uh, here. I do kind of like respecting the um, the longer downbeat, and then we'll come in with some double bass. Yo, I can't see shit. <laughs> cool. So I'm going to play this back once just to kind of hear that this is what I was intending, and I need some... Uh, symbol accents kind of for contrast here because I need to hear when well I guess we'll, we'll have the longer B right we'll have the eighth note uh, to, to denote when a phrase of five is starting again and we'll have the symbol accents so starting at the death break <laughs> Right, it's, it's not one, so this phrase, so the error I made there, uh, the second measure of this phrase does not have the eighth note at the beginning, so it doesn't have that big pause of bam, 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 bam. So uh, this needs to be uh, just this again. Budding. That's an end one. Uh, and then let me kind of replace, uh, Although this, I do want to make a, a more apparent accent. And then something's still not right about this tempo as I hear that more. That might be too fast. So I bumped that up. Let's try like 101. So coming in from... <laughs> What might be a neat thing on the fourth there is to use the uh, the version of it from the from the death riff. Um, although, so this is going to be. I apologize to uh, the drummer that ends up having to deal with this. For now, it's going to be software, so nobody cares. But. Um, still the same um so i'm just going to hear for a moment how those it's 30 second notes but it's because the the tempo is really low right it's with, with a 101 tempo um i want to hear the difference between the 30 second notes and the 16th notes in the feet of the drummer cool i do like that They don't need to be doing that forever though because the 16th notes still are cool. Um, uh, 
Uh, so so maybe let's try it. Let's try alternating then. Um, so what this structure would become, uh, and just for the sake of kind of hearing the whole thing flow, um, I'm going to start it from the beginning because I want to see if this this move into the death riff is as exciting as I kind of conceptualized. like that um, and one thing I I do need to kind of uh, hit the get the drums to acknowledge the break here so they don't just fall off um. uh, and then what I think would be fun is some kind of choked back um, whoops cannibal corpse does this too where there's there's things that are in odd meter there, there's things that are in odd meter, but because they're, um, <laughs> with the exception of the of Paul, the drummer's right hand when he's doing that like triplets over blasting thing, um, they are they might be even structures or they might be odd structures over a pretty vertical pattern. So it's not always apparent. Um, that definitely happens on the Bleeding album. Uh, I'll have to think about what song that is, where it's like something in five. And if you weren't thinking too much about it, you probably wouldn't even notice because it's against it's it's in the context of this pretty vertical drum rhythm. Um, so after this, um, that probably should happen like twice so that uh, Kellen has space to um, sing about things. Um, but I don't like. So as much as I said I do like repetition, I also kind of don't. Um, because there's a real clear point to me where something is like this idea is spent. So the second iteration of that I don't think should be a full iteration. So we had um, death riff with ending one. Then the whole band comes in and it's death riff ending two. Uh, three times death riff ending with the one ending with everybody. So that's four. So I would deal with like two more iterations of that. So probably... Uh, death riff ending two, death, death riff ending one, then pull it back to a, um, maybe like a palm muted riff. Uh, but I do need to take, um, just for the sake of my sanity, I'm going to play this back because I need to find when, when is the time when I'm going to apply the two phrases of this. <laughs> So here, um, no, oh, I copied the, the second ending, which is um, good. So we're going to do one death riff, um, second ending, followed by um, death riff, first ending. Uh, and then I'm going to pull the drums back to match that. I don't know why I pasted so many of those. Um, Oh, because I copied from that section. Here, good. Uh, what do I have at the end here? <laughs> cool. So after this, after this thing.
Um, so that's that's not inappropriate there. So to kind of give that a little groovier um, feel to that rhythm, it's kind of appropriate to pull this back into four uh, at this point. Um, and I would say that I intend going back to five, but that's a that's a fine choice there. Um, so based on this same based on this same uh, beginning section. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, that's too many, huh? Oh, no. Yeah, because we're in four. Got it. Um, so. Not literally that, but that's I'm um, getting an idea of, of what the rhythm should be there. So um, dun, these are all gotta be palm muted. Bum, 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 bum. Bow, down, down. Uh, I just have a thought. Just was thinking out some different, some different shapes of how that riff might go. Dun 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 dun. And then I think it was. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, interesting. Did this get into six? One sec. So I'm just writing it too short or something. Are these too short? One sec. <laughs> yes, they are. And then I love cheating the cheating the downbeat across the bar line. That's just a super funky thing. Uh, that I do as much as possible. I always have thought that was that that's a pretty constant in anything I write, but in, in winter light too, you can find that everywhere. You can find nine chords everywhere, and you can find cheating the downbeat to cross a bar line constantly because I love it. I just love it. Um, so what these notes literally are, um, probably going to change. Not necessarily, but um, absolutely possible. And I'm going to wrap it up after this section um, because I did just want to kind of demonstrate. I, I got a little carried away writing more stuff. Um. Interesting. Cool. So, um, um so non diatonic pitch, um, at least one of these, right? Because there's there's not going to be. I tend to write in in regular minor because I just love that sound. Um, but it's not going to have both a major seven and a minor two uh, in relation to this uh, G sharp. 
that the riff is based on. And then that making a, a minor seven shape out of that A is, is pretty neat. Dun, 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 dun. There's a little dead note or something in there. That's not what this rhythm is, but I need to hear it. Hang on. Yeah. Why did I wait? Uh, I have something weird there, hand. Oh, because I dropped down a string, but the rhythm is the rhythm is there. And then you know that bar line thing I like to do. Whoops. Cool. Uh, so let me hear these together. Um, this is more of like a grindy, punky something. Um, but actually, let's let's listen to it uh, coming off of the the death riff. Thing. <laughs> Cool, but that's the idea. Um, uh, those are tied. These are not tied, although they should be. Those are tied, and these do need to be tied. Good. Um, so thinking of what should go under that riff, my mind goes to Brutal Truth. That's that's like a, a, a Brutal truth -y verse riff from something like evolution through revolution um, um, so i like to have the drummer acknowledge that that bar line jump too um, so i try to use like ride symbols are so ride symbols are difficult because it, i feel like it's it can be really like cheeky and ironic to use a ride symbol or it can just be like only butt rock. Um, so I'm going to try that and see if we can get away with it here. Oh, that's the high outline thing. So this is acknowledging that uh, that rhythm cheating the bar line. These are all going to be tied. And then, uh, although it's a little extra pause, would probably come back in on the next snare hit. So there's there's not a real need to like, you must hit that. Um, the one extra kick drum there. is going to be this. I think that's right. Um, before I wrap it up, I just want I want to hear this thing in its entirety.
definitely meant to have double time ride there. Uh, although I do like um, kind of having like a big um, dramatic hit at the beginning of these measures. So probably would take out that one. It's more about the, the up and down of that vertical rhythm than it is about literally like hitting every one of them. You just need to, even if there's a pause, you just need to get it back in, the, in that like up and down vertical rhythm feel. So let's, let's try this. I don't think I like that more. So this is what I was talking about. The, the ride symbol can be cheeky and awesome. Uh, or it can be just like, why are you doing this? And I, I feel like if it's it's either too slow or why are you doing this? So that's definitely going to change. Uh, we've been going for a while, though, and we covered a lot of uh, theory junk and a lot of um, how we go about writing, writing stuff for the band. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you for joining me. We're going to be doing more of these. We're going to be doing one on... Uh, instrument maintenance and setups. Um, I feel like it's really important to um, just have that at your disposal. Whenever whenever your instrument is not feeling as comfortable um, as it can, you can change that with just some cheap tools. Um, and that's, a, that's another way to... Let me bring this into practicing as well too. So I'm absolutely a supporter of the idea that leave, that having your instrument easily accessible is going to increase practice time, right? If it's in the back of the closet and you need to go in there and take it out of the case every single time you want to practice, you're going to practice less just because it's a pain to do so. Um, so having your instrument out, that's important. Having your instrument comfortable and be a joy to play, that's going to increase your practice time too. And uh, I think Adam Neely puts a lot of things well, but an, w one thing in particular is that habits in general are hard to break. So whether that's a bad habit or a good habit, right? If you get in the habit of just practicing running two songs every day at noon, you start getting into the into the rhythm of that, and it's it's hard to break that as well. So you can cultivate good habits in the way that uh, you can kind of exploit what's obnoxious about bad habits or laziness and uh, get yourself holding the thing more often. Um, so we'll be doing more on maintenance and setups. We'll be doing more on theory because uh, I have many more modes to go through. I plan on doing the major and minor modes, uh, maybe some others because there are there are interesting things like the bebop scale. Um, and yeah, so we're going to be doing these on the weekends. Follow the Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash winterlightdm. Uh, to see when we're going to be going live. I also do a bunch of gaming streaming on there. I do MTG Arena and Among Us. So come hang when you can. We'll be glad to, to talk theory ideas and um, just show you what we're up to. Thanks, y'all. <laughs>